Did you like it though? Did you double time? All right, people, what's good? We got a special guest today, my guy JB. What's what's happening with you, man? Hey, what's up, Terrence? I uh, I was thinking back on the draft that we did last year with the the FF Dynasty guys, and it was the first time you and I met. Um, glad we get to connect here again this year. Yeah, yeah, it's been a it's been a while. But I, I was listening to, this, to some of your takes, and I was like, well, a, a lot of stuff I, I seem to agree with you on, you know, but that's why I picked some players that we may butt heads with, you oh, know, okay. to make sure we talk about, I was, you know, some polarizing players I did pick, you know, that I, I got some special takes on myself. But yeah, uh, there's there's some good names on there. I, I was looking at your list and I was like, OK, this could get interesting. Yeah, because I have no clue how you feel about them, but I know, you know, some people are beloved and you know, some people hate their guts. And so it'd be, it should be <laughs> interesting to see how things go. So, you know, first off, you know, what are your overall thoughts on this incoming rookie class? Uh, I I like the class overall. You know, I, I think from from a high end talent perspective not just a talent perspective, but like what we can expect from a fantasy standpoint, the top seven right now, I mean, it's kind of been a locked in top seven. And I'm sure every once in a while you'll have folks that will throw somebody else in the mix. But when we're talking super flex tight end premium, the, the top seven, that's kind of where I want to be. And then it tapers off a little bit, but I don't know about you, Terrence, but like for me, this year, because there's so many wide receivers outside of the top three that are kind of clumped together and so many running backs that are clumped together, landing spot and draft capital, I really think this year more than ever, it's going to be a big differentiator between different guys, even within a tier. But, uh, you know, they're like I talked about the top seven landing spots are going to be critical for some guys outside of that. And then there's going to be a lot of depth and a lot of people chasing the next Puka Nakua and Tank Dell and guys like that. Will we find a diamond in the rough here this year? Possibly. But uh, overall, I like this class. I think it's a fun one. And there's a lot of different profiles. Like you said, there's so many guys that are polarizing. You either like them or you hate them. There's so many different profiles. It's kind of like there's somebody for everybody. Well, good, good, good luck finding that Puka Nakua tank. I, I know, I know. Everybody is combing, and they they're trying to put everyone, every player out there. <laughs> oh, this could be the one. Like they they combing hard. So I mean, I'll I'll have like I had takes like a month and a half ago, and now it's going out the window because people mentioning their name, you know. So I mean, it's going out the window. I, I felt good about it then. I like when well, nobody talking about Malik Washington. That goes out the window. Said, well, nobody talking about Jermaine Burton going out the window. So I hey, <laughs> you know, I it's not it's not much I can pull out, pull out the hat. <laughs> it's it's like there are no sleepers anymore. Like, like everybody, because there's so much information and and so many folks sharing their thoughts. And like with the NFL draft and the combine and and pro days, there's so much coverage that I feel like everybody has heard about every single player. So like you mentioned, like a Malik Washington or Jermaine Burton, it's like once one of the big guys, like a Matt Harmon talks you up or something, the your, your coverage is blown. Your cover's blown there. <laughs> yeah. I was like, man, this guy, but, but I was wondering why no one was talking about him, but they, they did let me know that he got off field issues and that's, that's the deal. So I'm like, Hey, I, it, it, it's, Cause I got him ranked high, and I was just like, "Well, he's he got a good prospect score for me." I don't know what's going on, but with that, it's like I don't put in account, you know, stuff I don't. Well, one, I don't, I don't, I didn't know that was going on, but two, I don't like to put into account that kind of stuff because that that's not skill related. So you know, yeah, Jermaine Burton's a funny one. Um, uh, Mitch and I, Mitch over at Dynasty Theory, with me we're in a few Devi leagues together and we co-manage and it was going into last year when he was transferring to Alabama, uh, which was, uh, I didn't know at the time, like you said, like 
like his sixth school in eight years or something like between high school and college. But like, there's a lot of things to like with his profile. And there, there were leagues that we were scooping him up in Devi. And then it's like, okay, then, then all this other stuff, we start to get a, become aware of it. But like you said, like I'm, I'm a very analytical person and I have my spreadsheets. I don't have a, a, a character score. I don't have an off the field score. Like that's kind of the, the nuance that, that the analytics perspective isn't going to pick up. Yeah. So, but I do have a, I do have like a little word game. Uh, and I want you to pick the top five players at each position and just give me one word to describe that prospect. Let's see if you can keep it to one word. And and guess what? This is going to get hard when it gets to the tight ends because uh, you might not even, you know, have five on your left. You know? <laughs> I know, I know. So are you, give, are you giving me the players or do I got to give the player and then the you world? Know, I think our top five probably differ when it comes to um, running back. I think running back and, and wide receivers like my, my, this year, my, Prospect scores are kind of wild. Um, I, I'm sure we're gonna we're gonna be on lockstep on quarterback and probably tight end, but I think um, so we're gonna go with yours. All right, all right. So quarterback, Caleb Williams, overanalyzed. <laughs> like okay. this dude, like I feel like it's it, he's under a microscope you have so many people like oh we, you know he's supposed to be this generational prospect and i feel like the the struggles that like trevor lawrence had coming out obviously you had urban meyer there so it's kind of a weird situation but it's like okay we've been hearing about this dude for how long now we're gonna pick him apart and we're going to find the, oh, I, I don't like the way that he cried with his mom in the stands. I don't like, you know, he paints his fingernails. Can he score fantasy points for me? And I think the answer to that question is yes. Uh, so I think he's overanalyzed. Okay. I'll put chaos, man. Uh, he, 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 that's how it looked like when he be playing. He loves the chaos. <laughs> he, he plays really well out of structure and he kind of had to at USC. The, the offensive line wasn't a strength, and I, I think he shows I, – I like chaos. I think that's a good one. <laughs> uh, I don't want to say he thrive, thrives off of it, but I, I think that he's one of the guys that can certainly play whenever pl – you know, he can make plays whenever plays break down. How do you feel about his rushing rate dropping each season? He doesn't want to run. He's verbally said that. He don't want to run. Yeah, I, you know, the he's not going to give you like that, that rushing floor. Like we talk about with Jaden Daniels, it's talked about with Drake May to an extent. He's not going to give you that. But, you know, I, I hate to say like a player like Patrick Mahomes or, you know, maybe even a Dak Prescott now that, you know, after the injuries doesn't run all that much. I think his play as a passer is going to elevate him. So if you're getting plus six for touchdowns, minus four for interceptions, that's going to lean me even more heavily towards a Caleb Williams. Now, if you want to talk about a plus four, minus two scoring, I could see kind of wanting more of that. Say, what kind of league you playing minus four for interceptions? A plenty. There's plenty of oh plus six, God. minus four, Terrence. <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, like the... Uh, that that I don't want to say it's a concern, but you would like for that to see a little bit of an uptick there, if at all possible. And and maybe you know I mean, the Bears didn't let Justin Fields run, and that was his strength. So I don't know if that's going to be in in Caleb Williams' repertoire too often here. Okay, what you got next? Jaden Daniels uh, ceiling. <laughs> Oh, we on the same page. I was waiting to see if we're going to have the same word for one of the guys. That's exactly what I put. Exactly like, I put. And, and a lot of people, their point, I mean, even 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 my guy, Mitch, on Dynasty Theory, I mentioned him earlier, he, he's betraying me and he's saying, well, 
He has the, he had two high end wide receivers and he did, but you like, he was able to produce under pressure. He was able to produce in a clean pocket. I actually think he doesn't get enough credit for his ability just to play quarterback in a clean pocket. Everybody sees this athlete. They see a guy that can run the ball. Does he get blown up because of his size from time to time? That dude got freaking body slammed more than once. But I, I just think that ceiling is too high. He's a very good passer. Uh, whether it's Washington, New England, I think he's going to be a, a difference maker and a playmaker for whichever team drafts him. Yeah, I don't know if um, you remember last year at this time, I was saying that, watch, I was telling you, you guys on the stream, I was like, watch, if Anthony Richards gets drafted high, he is the 101. And people thought, you know, was feeling like that's kind of hot take. And I was like, I'm, I've been waiting for them to push on um, Jaden Daniels. If you get drafted 102, it's going to be people pushing that narrative because, for me, he has the highest ceiling. Now, of course, <laughs> this can go the Justin Fields route and he not not play for a second contract. <laughs> it could burn real quick. <laughs> I, I was saying, so with him, like, if he's on the field, he's going to put up fantasy points. I mean, like you mentioned Anthony Jeez. Richardson. when. When he is on the field, he is going to give you so much production. But the floor is super low, and it's not from a weekly standpoint. Like I think his floor is super high when he's on the field. It's just, does he get that second contract? But that's a concern for us down the road. Yeah. Right now, I'm going to enjoy those fantasy points. I'm, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to worry about that too much. I'm, I'm really not, you know. But I, I understand, you know, um, since people all worry about that, that's why... They, they really draft Caleb, you know, uh, for safety. So I'm guessing Drake May is next. What you got for him? Inconsistent. <laughs> he he is my quarterback three. I, he flashes. He he does a lot of things extremely well. His He has a ceiling, but my worry is, and there was a really good interview. I don't know if you saw it. Uh, somebody posted in our discord the other day. It was uh, uh, Kevin O'Connell, the head coach of the Minnesota Vikings, uh, talking about like what he's looking for in a quarterback. And he one thing with Drake May, people talk about like the footwork. There, there's some question marks there. And he didn't say Drake May, JJ, he didn't say any names, but he specifically pointed out being able to fix problems. And he specifically said like lower body things. Like if we get a Drake made in Minnesota and you have Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, TJ Hawkinson, when he's back, I think that could be really exciting, but it's just, I, I think inconsistent is the word for, for me, for Drake may. Okay. I'll put prototype. You look like the prototypical quarterback. I, I mean, I, I, I could see that as well. And I, I actually, that's a, that's a great word. I'm stealing it later. <laughs> uh, JJ McCarthy, j solid. I, I just, I think he's solid. I think he's going to give you that kind of quarterback two production for your super flex teams. And I mean, there's, there's not much more that I, uh, that I really want to say for JJ McCarthy, just solid. He's my quarterback four. And I and I and I put him down for later as uh quarterbacks to talk about, but you know, but I'll I'll mention what I put, my word I put for him, but I don't want to get, you know, going to talking about it. We'll talk about it later, but I put over height. Uh, <laughs> like you said, we'll get to that later. Cause I don't I don't necessarily disagree. Uh and then my quarterback five, like this one has been tough for me because really I think there's going to be five quarterbacks taken in the first round of the NFL draft. I don't know if it's going to be Michael Penix or Bo Nix, but right now I'm leaning Bo Nix. Prototype is a, a word that I would use for him. Okay. He, 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 he just has that, that, that look of a, I mean, he, he he's a, He's a big white dude. Let's call it what it like, like that. The prototypical when you, when you think about like back in the day quarterback, like I think 
like you look at like the Denver Broncos, like a, a Brock Osweiler, Peyton Manning. Like, I just think Bo Nix looks like a Denver Bronco to me. Like he just, he looks like a Denver Bronco. I put on uh, underrated cause I hear people shit on him. Every time they get a chance, they shit on him. <laughs> I saw a blurb like, okay, we give Jaden Daniels the benefit of the doubt, you know, transferring schools, not being off to a hot start. Uh, but with Bo Nix, it's like, well, when he was at Auburn, he was garbage. So, like, I'm kind of sticking with that. Like, he he elevated players around him, and he gives you enough mobility. I, I think he's, he certainly can be mobile, not necessarily going to be a Russian quarterback, but uh, I, I think underrated is a good word for him, too. Yeah. Well, you want to move to a position you want to move to next? Let's just go running back. Running back. See, my running back rankings is all screwed. And I didn't I well, I didn't bother to rank it. Like I got prospect scores and it doesn't align with the top five. So I might not even have one word answers for you with this one. So go ahead. <laughs> oh, I, I, I might come up with one. <laughs> I remember last year running back was the big one that uh, during the mock draft, like that was the one position that I, I remember. I was like, I, Terrence and I don't really align too much here. Um, <laughs> so for me, Trey Benson Underrated for me. Mm. Number two, Jonathan Brooks. Uh, I'm trying to limit this to one word here. Uh, <laughs> complete. I, I think Jonathan Brooks is a complete back, but I don't want to get too much into him because I know we're going to have to be yeah, talking about him. My later. word for him would be broken, but go ahead. Oh. <laughs> Oh <laughs> uh, well, I mean, coming off the injury, I, that's, I what, that's that. what I got. <laughs> coming off the injury, this is where it gets funky for me. But so, if I'm just going with my heart right now, number three, Audric Estime. Okay, monster. We, I, I put train. I, yeah, uh, number four. Like, I have so many guys tiered together right now, but number four, uh, I'll go with Marshawn Lloyd. I exciting. Even though it doesn't come out in my voice right there. And it be like, I have, I have five guys here. And it's like, I, I, picking a top five, it, it's tough. Uh, and then number five, I'll go Braylon Allen, and this is not going to be a one-word answer, but I think he's got a chip on his shoulder. Yeah, well, he was not in my top five, but I would have put slow. Oh, uh, if we're going to say slow, <laughs> you could throw that for Audric Estimate too. That dude still hasn't finished his 40. At, well, at least uh, he ran it. He wasn't know, running from it. <laughs> I know. Like, I – like. I don't want to say, like, I completely respect, like, especially the guys like like Marvin Harrison, Malik Neighbors, Caleb Williams. They Like, they have nothing to gain from, from doing this on-field stuff at this point in the process. But, like, guys that we ha truly have question marks about, selfishly, I, I wish they would have been out there. And Braylon Allen's one of those guys. Especially when... um the over and unders was like a four four i went i went lower so f i mean um <laughs> higher so fast hell nah i was like this, <laughs> if this man run that fast oh no nah. like if you could run a four or five i would be all in you know what I, mean? <laughs> I yeah i and like with braylon allen like he had he has the name value, I think, within the dynasty community because he comes in Big Ten school. He he produces immediately, gets a solid workload, just a big dude, like fits the bill. I and then, hear, and he's so young. He's, I know. I, I give a shit about you being young. I care about him being good. <laughs> I give a shit about him. Hey, that's the same thing they use 
for KJ Hamler. Uh, he's the youngest in the draft. Who the L cares? Can he play? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, Braylon Allen, 20 years old. I mean, that's, yeah, he's, he's super young. Uh, he, so this guy's not my top five, but what do you think about Will Shipley? Uh, I put for Will Shipley. I'm putting you on the spot right now, Terrence. I put overlooked. See, I agree. I like I've seen some people like really hype him up and I'm not, I'm not there, but I think he's like, he could be a weapon. Like I like yeah. my backs that can catch passes. Will Shipley. He had over 80 catches at Clemson. Uh, like I, I think he's overlooked too. Okay. Yeah. All right, so maybe we're not all that different on running backs. I, well, I told you. I mean, I, I don't. I don't think we was off. We might have been off on a position of. I mean, on the, um, the top five as far as them being ranked last year, but we had the same people. I had my worries about Gibbs because it wasn't that many stop spots we could put him in. I mean, guess what? What my comp for him was Swift. I didn't know he was gonna go and take Swift's spot. Next, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know that was gonna happen. I, <laughs> I remember that being one of the talking points was the the spot for like a guy like Gibbs and A Chan, and they, I mean, Gibbs exceeded any like I I liked him a lot, but I didn't expect him to go out and and play the way he did this year. Like that was, I, I couldn't imagine that. Uh, so wide receivers, all right. Uh, Marvin Harrison, I I kind of I don't want to use the same word I use for Caleb Williams. You know I, I'm gonna I'm gonna break your rules here, Terrence. I'm, I I think he is, people suffer prospect fatigue with him. Like like I think we're overanalyzing it. I like I know a lot of people. Well, what? Like, neighbors was not your number one. What? <laughs> I, I, I loved it. I love neighbors. I love Roma Dunze. You know, <laughs> for me, it's it's still Marvin Harrison. I I just I, I truly think people, especially right now, the week before the NFL draft, people are getting bored. They this this guy has been on their radar for so long because he has that that family pedigree. His dad, Hall of Famer. Like I think people are just bored, and this isn't a, a knock on Malik Neighbors or Roma Dunze. I think both of them would be arguably the top wide receiver in most classes. Like they're both that good, but I just think Marvin Harrison, he, he's an all around player. Um, you know, and, and I'll say complete for him as well. Side note. I just was listening to a podcast and the quote was Marvin Harrison jr. Is not a top five rookie wide receiver. I saw that last night. So I and I wanted context. I was like, "Are you are, are you saying he's not going to finish like in the top five as far as fantasy scoring? Or are you saying he's not a top five talent? Like because it, there, there's a world where he might not finish top five in fantasy scoring." But his value yeah. why his value still gonna be high to the mug. <laughs> I w did you I watched that short and I was like, okay, maybe they'll provide context. The the did you watch the actual I, video? I watched the whole thing. Be because schools <laughs> like Georgia have too many wide receivers for a, a guy to really take off. That's why Marvin Harrison's not my top five. That that's not even a reason. <laughs> Like if you get, if you sit there and you have evidence, you know if you can really back your take. Okay, like yeah, it might be a hot take, but I get it. Like you said, Marvin Harrison might not finish top five scoring in twenty twenty four. I I wouldn't be shocked by that. That not yeah, crazy at all. Our receivers. I'm not. I wouldn't be shocked. Yeah, but to say he's not in my top five for dynasty wide receivers, uh, dynasty rookie wide receivers. And then here's my lame ass reason. I don't, I, I don't know, man. But I saw as soon as you started talking, I was like, I know what he's gonna say. Oh. <laughs> uh, Malik Neighbors. Oh, hold up, hold up. I didn't get my oh. word. My word for him is him. He is him. Himothy. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> With a capital H. Uh, Malik Neighbors.
uh, versatile. I put dynamic. So we, we go I, on the same page. Like I, I, again, I really respect like Matt Harmon and, and the reception perception folks and, and all the people that put in the time and really study and like sit there and chart all this stuff. Like uh, a lot of stuff coming out with Malik neighbors that, like he would operate really well being able to mix from the outside and be in the slot. So, but I, I think he's going to perform no matter what, but I, I think versatile. That's a word I like for him. Roma Dunes, a I, superstar. I think this kid, hey, I told you we on the same page, man. That's exactly the word I got. I told you, I told you. Let's go. Hey, I like hey, hey, and Matt Her- Harmon on um, confirmed it with, with that uh with the route tree, man. I'm like, oh no, oh no. <laughs> and like, well, he's not an early declare, you know. I, and listen, I get like I said, I have my spreadsheet and I have all of my metrics and all the data that I'm looking at. And one of the things is early declare. You know, I think we gotta start leaning a little bit away from that because especially with these kids that are wrapping up from their career start with the COVID season. Like you had 20, 20, 21, 22, 23. And now with the NIL money, like, I think you're going to see kids going back, you know, they're making money, they're staying in school, they're having fun. Like, I, and then look, look at guys recently that haven't been early declares Devonte Smith, Chris Alave, Puka Nakua. We mentioned him earlier. He wasn't, there's a lot of really talented guys. It's, it's not, uh, I, I think it's going to be skewed away from a little bit, but yeah, I think Roma Dunze, he's somebody of his talent. It's easy to be overlooked in this draft because of the hype that neighbors and Marvin Harrison get. But if you're sitting there in a super flex league, it, I mean, he might be there at one Oh seven in a lot of leagues. Like that's, that's a smash pick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if, I've been trying, like, if if I can trade Drake London, like, if he falls and I can trade Drake London and move up, that that's the move I'm making. Like, give me give me a doom say. And uh, I was telling my former co-host, I do give I do give a bump if you're early declare, because that means, hey, <laughs> I'm coming out early. I know I'm being drafted early. I am him. Oh, uh, you know, uh, even if it's not true, at least you think that in your head. Oh, uh, I do not give a knock for you coming out as a senior, but I will knock you from coming out as a red shirt senior. If you've been in college five years, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you a knock for that. I don't knock them for four years, but I knock you for five years. But. I was talking. I I just said uh uh the running back Tyrone Tracy. He's been in college six years. He's like Van Wilder, that movie <laughs> Van Wilder. Like, I'm yeah, not like I'm knocking on running backs. Look, I ain't giving no <laughs> grace to running backs. Your show <laughs> life is short. <laughs> yeah, that dude's been in college for I mean almost two terms for a president here. Jeez Louise. Uh Brian Thomas for me, he's for uh explosive. You know, I, I think he's got that big play potential showed out during the combine 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 runs that four, three, three, 40 really excelled. And at times was overshadowed by Malik neighbors and rightfully so I get it, but like, what did he have 17 touchdowns or something this past year? So it's like, okay, if, if you're going to knock Jaden Daniels, because he had these two amazing wide receivers, then you really need to be propping up and touting Brian Thomas because he made Jaden Daniels look so good uh, in addition to Malik neighbor. So uh, Brian Thomas explosive. I, I think he's going to be, uh, you know, somebody that could go towards the back half of the first round in the NFL draft. And there's going to be some exciting landing spots there. Well, and that's, and, and, and that's the thing, like some players that I, I I'm on the fence about, or I feel some type of way about, they're going to get landing spots that <laughs> is going to drag me towards. Now, I was on a fence. Well, my word for him was intriguing. I was on a fence about Brian Thomas because uh, I'm like, ah, 
feels like Christian Watson to me, you know. <laughs> I've seen I've seen that comp. Uh we uh, that is not the first time I heard it. Like for me though, it, it comes down to like Christian Watson, you know, comes out he he was 23 years old. He was beating up on on <laughs> lower end talent and uh, Brian Thomas was doing it at the highest level. Yes, he was able to get great matchups and, and not face all that much double coverage because of Malik neighbors. But I, I, I think he is going to be a better Christian Watson. Yeah, I, like I, th I ultimately, I think Christian Watson is a good comp, especially from like a, um, uh, testing perspective and, and their, their measurables. But I like Christian Watson's been at like 11 fantasy points in PPR the first two years of his career. I, I could see Brian Thomas sitting at like 13, 14. So I, I think the comp's good. I just think he's going to be a little bit better. And I think he's going to have a higher floor on a weekly basis as opposed to Christian Watson, who, you know, Jordan Love, he's just been uh, finding mismatches and you don't know who's going to be the wide receiver on any given week there. I think Brian Thomas is going to demand a target share every week. Definitely could. Um, I felt more comfortable with him after I heard Matt Harmon talk about him. But then he also threw me for a loop when he said, yeah, he'll be a great number two. <laughs> I, See, I, like, think, I, <laughs> I think that's easy to say, though, just because he did pair with Malik Neighbors, obviously, in college. But, like, if he were to land somewhere, like, we still get production from Devontae Smith. T. Higgins, Jalen Waddle, like I'm okay with him being a number two if that's the case. Now I, I don't know in this situation if, if it was like he can't really be a number one. Now that would be a concern if that's kind of what the yeah. thought was. Hey, hey, show felt like that's what he was saying. Like you know, I don't like that. Your, he shouldn't be your number one, but he'd be a great number two. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Brian Thomas, that was what four. Yep. Who is your number five? Drum roll, please. Is it gonna be the uh the consensus McConkey or are you gonna throw a, a, a wrench in there? I'm gonna stick with Xavier Worthy for now. Okay, uh, okay. Uh super early production, you know, uh made uh Adonnie Mitchell this year like the 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 metrics weren't all that great i think that was a result of xavier worthy being the type of player he is my concern with him is the frame is a little concerning but again like we get the like we get a Devonte smith we get a tank down like these guys can still produce uh so the frame could be an issue but then also I, like i just have this weird feeling in my stomach terrence that he slips in the nfl draft a little bit and i i like I, I thought he, I thought he was all but a lock to be a first rounder, and I'm like, that just mean he's going to a bad team now. I, I know, like, <laughs> like it would just, it just, I don't feel right. I don't feel right for some reason. But for Xavier Worthy, I will say, what's the word I like for Xavier Worthy? I don't want to steal your word of intriguing. Um. Xavier worthy potential. Mm. I didn't I, I didn't have him top five. I was well, gonna he, say you you're like, I don't want to talk about Xavier Worthy. Well, I mean, no, well, he's kind of in my like, well, as far as my prospect score, he's not in my top five. As far as my rankings, if I was to rank him, he would be. I do like worthy, but I do have my red marks all through my notes for him. Uh Small hands, um, light, you know, 165, PFF grade worse in each season, under three yards route run. <laughs> yeah, run. The, the, the max yards per route run um, certainly is not that. He's not in that elite tier, certainly so not. So it's like I got little red marks, but I, I like him. Um, if I had a word for him, of course, it would be fast. But um, – you know, we'll we'll you know we'll see how he's utilized. I I hear that you know he he doesn't always catch the ball as well. He had 
He fights, and that's a problem for wide receivers. <laughs> but but he, I don't have a high drop rate for him, so you know, hey, he, he maybe he'll figure it out, you know, because I like, I got a lot of red marks for someone else, but I kind of like him, Troy Franklin. I kind of like Troy Franklin. Got a lot I, of I red have, marks I have them, ne- I have them neck and neck. Yeah, you know, so they're in my same tier. So yeah. Yeah, tiny guys that can make big plays. Uh, it's going to be interesting, the landing spots in those two, and the draft capital. I think Troy Franklin, maybe like middle of the second in the NFL draft. Do you think that's fair? Yeah, yeah. All right. Tight ends. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, Brock Bowers. I hate to use the word, but generational. Uh, you know, I... I, I know Kyle, I know Kyle Pitts was generational <laughs> and that was just a few years ago. But hey, in dynasty fantasy football, generations they're very short. <laughs> what what word did you have for him? Special. Yeah, I put special. Uh next up and I got to scroll down here. I'm looking at my tiers. I'm scrolling down, but Jatavion Sanders more than one word here, but I think landing spot dependent. I think he could really have, like, if he's able to be, like, use him to his strengths. Like, he he essentially is, like, I think, like a wide receiver. But if if we're getting the the additional points in tight end premium and he's getting the targets and he goes into a nice situation, I I do think he can produce. I just, all these profiles at this point have so many question marks outside of Brock Bauer. So I think a lot of them, you're going to need them to be put in a situation to succeed. I think I started getting lazy about this point because I just put disappointing because I just I just thought he was going to test better. Than what I, I did, did too. <laughs> I had him. So like I, I start getting my rookies in the in our tiers like in January-ish. And I get like, all right, here's my top 12. Then here's my top 18, so on and so forth. And for Jatavion Sanders, like, like in tight end premium leagues, I was like, oh, I could see taking this guy like 201, 202, 203, like pretty early. And then another one that I have, Devi shares galore. Like, I, I think I'm in like four Devi leagues, five Devi leagues. I think I have three or four shares. So like my percentage was high. I, I thought this guy was going to be, he like, he looks more athletic on the field. So that's what I'll, you know, hopium. I'll, I'll keep telling he myself was like. That. The rank like the the number one for uh, at least uh, what it was the I on twenty four seven like I know they have different positions and he was like number one at the at least position <laughs> right yeah like it just disappointing yeah underwhelming that but uh, next up for me oh gosh uh, Like, I have five guys here. I, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I, I have Cade Stover, Jaheim Bell, Jared Wiley, Theo Johnson, Ben Sinet. Well, goddamn, I don't have all them, but... Uh, <laughs> like, I... I got Stover, uh, Sinai, and uh, and Bell. Like, I... I think Jared Wiley is sneaky. I, I think he could be a sneaky guy that gets drafted a little bit earlier gets on people's radars and like he's athletic enough. He had enough production. I think he could be like, I'm going to say sneaky, but do I got to give you a fourth and fifth guy? Yeah. Do yeah. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh man. All right. Uh, Wait, well, you, you mentioned, well, we, we'll go off my list since you mentioned my guy. So Stover. Stover. Just, I'm going through my my rookie sheet here, <laughs> not not completely you know spacing out over here. I for him I would say solid. Like I think he is like he's good across the board from an analytical standpoint. Like he he four six five forty. I that was actually better than I I thought it was going to be. Solid speed score. He's athletic enough. His his relative athletic score was eight point three three. So again, not in the upper echelon. 
just missed like the 20% receiving touchdown market share. So he gives you some of that touchdown upside. He was involved in the passing game, plenty for, for a tight end at the collegiate level. So I would solid. All right. I put overlook. What about, cause you know, I don't really hear anybody speaking of him. I'm surprised you even mentioned his name. So not, I got, I put surprising cause he surprised me a little bit, but what about you? Uh, I agree. And like, like he was one of the more athletic guys from a testing perspective and really with tight ends, that's the one that I think athleticism might be weighed a little bit more heavily and should be than looking at the other positions. I think he could be the second tight end off the board in NFL drafts. Mm. I, it would not surprise me one bit to see him go before Jatavion Sanders. So yeah, surpri- I, I would say surprising from the way he comes out, like in, in from an analytical perspective, but I would not be surprised to see the NFL really like him. Yeah, I would. I wouldn't either. Uh, and with Bell, I put unique because he's gonna if, for him to be productive, he's gonna have to be used in some unique ways. So he, he can end up on a team and just be buried on a depth chart, and you never front hear from him again. <laughs> yeah, he was six foot two, like not not the biggest of guys there. But again, like it, there are there are smaller guys that have seen production, and it, where you're going to get him in rookie drafts, like I mean, if it, especially if it's not tight end premium, there's a good chance he might not even be drafted in, in rookie drafts. So you just load up for free, see if you have a a nice little lottery ticket. I don't hate it. All right. So um, the, with the <clears throat> incoming, you know, I have three people I want to know are you in on and I, I think I already know two you're in on but you know you will have to make a case for me for those two um but are you in on AD Mitchell you know what this was surprising for me because he was lacking in a lot of analytical categories like I know you know uh receiving yards per team pass attempt his max was like 1.7 something uh, but again, he tested really well. I think he's going to be, he had one of the, the highest a dots in the class. His, uh, yards after catch per reception was fairly low, like right around three. I, I said, it's kind of, it kind of reminds you of like a, a Mike Evans type situation. I'm not saying 80 Mitchell's Mike Evans, but, uh, like you, you get the high a dot low yards after catch per reception. He had one of the highest quarterback ratings when he was targeted. So significantly higher than Xavier Worthy. Uh, I, I think it just speaks to the big play potential. I, I could see him going to somebody like Baltimore at the end of the first. And I, I think that big play potential in an offense like that, where it's like a lot of underneath guys, really could be a, a nice weapon for a team to act as a field stretcher and and give you probably going to be a boom bust type player in the NFL. But those bust weeks, I, I think, or those boom weeks, I, I think they're going to boom. So are you in on him or not? Why well, to give you a 10-minute spiel here before <laughs> I... Uh, <laughs> at cost, yeah, I think I'm in. Okay, so um, I say I, I don't really want to be in, in, on, in on him because I don't like the history of um, players that have a under two yards for route run and i'm uh you know i i'm not a fan of that but of course he's gonna probably go at the end of the first round and end up in a very very favorable situation <laughs> you know because i and that's and that's the thing <laughs> people gonna be on my ass because i be on you know i be on comments and youtube videos and now you're like uh 80 mitchell but of course with my luck, he'll go to the Bills and like ah, uh, not 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 he have no uh choice but to produce. <laughs> well, here's the so even if like I'm glad you mentioned that like even if you don't like a prospect like let's say you you don't like a JJ McCarthy or an AD Mitchell or Brian Tom, whoever like if they get a nice landing spot and have good draft capital, like you're gonna be able to get a really nice return if you're like okay. I don't want to draft this guy, but I know a lot of people like him and he got a juicy landing spot. You're going to you're going to get a solid return if looking to trade that pick. 
And that, and, and that's why about that's what I was just about to say. At this point, I'm you know I've been playing Dynasty long enough that, and I'm sticking with I'm sticking with my process. If I don't like a guy, I'm not going to let a landing spot sell me on that that guy. You know, so if, if when that pick come up. And he the best next. I'm gonna get someone else that loves them, you know. <laughs> and it happens every year. We get a sky more that comes out of nowhere because of the landing spot. I'm uh, glad people was higher on Sky more than me. And I wasn't off on him, but there was people that was super high on him. <laughs> and I, when he dropped at the end of the first that year, okay, I was like, okay, that I'll take him. But I watched people take him high in the first. I'm like, well, yeah. that's reaching too high for me. <laughs> yeah, that, that was, I mean, but we get it every year. And I think we're going to get it this year with somebody. And, you know, it, I, if the Bills take somebody in the first round, or especially if they move up, I think the public perception is really going to be all over that wide receiver. So are you in on J.J. McCarthy? The golden boy. I know. Because all I hear, look, when, I, when it, people give their reasons, well, all he do is win. He's a winner. It, like that's that's the first time I ever heard that being the reason for for someone that you throw everything out out the book. You didn't you didn't have people people would have to have a benchmark. So many things. All the other prospects got to have hit benchmarks, but now it's going thrown out the window, and you're saying he's a winner. I, I'm out on him but let me provide additional context here i i think when the nfl drools or drools holy cow <laughs> rolls around and maybe people are drooling all over jj mccarthy but whenever the nfl draft rolls around i think people are end up gonna ha have him over drake may and rookie drafts because i think landing something and that's why i'm out because He's my quarterback for today. And you know why? Because uh, if, if we're going by mock draft, Drake is more likely to go to the Patriots and he more likely to go to the Vikings. 100%. And guess what? I'm not going to let that fool me. <laughs> 100%. I, like I said, when, when we did the, the word association with J.J. McCarthy, I, I think he's solid. I don't think he's like his range of outcomes. I just don't think it's going to be there from a ceiling perspective. When you look at those other three guys that are above him. So because I think he's going to rise a little bit too high and he's going to ultimately be the quarterback three for a lot of people, I'm going to go with out or uh, like out on him. But right now I have him in that one Oh eight, one Oh nine tier. It's more of a reflection on who I have at one ten and beyond. I think, there's just so many question marks that there I prefer the quarterback, but yeah, out on JJ McCarthy for those reasons. Yeah. I think there will always be someone higher on him than me. And I've even seen people put him at um, the one or two or a second in their quarterback ranking like already. And I was just like blown away. I, I'm like, okay. If, if Drake May goes to the Commanders, Jaden Daniels goes to the dreaded Patriots, and J.J. McCarthy goes to the Vikings, I, I think you hit the nail on the head, Terrence. I think we're going to see too many people elevate. Like We're going to see J.J. McCarthy go like 102, 103 in rookie drafts, if that happens. And it's crazy. Y'all yeah, can have them. <laughs> Y'all can have them. All right. Are you in on Jonathan Brooks. I'm in. I'm in. And the I, I think we're gonna get a juicy landing spot. I think we're now I I remember talking about Zach Charbonnet last year when we did the mock draft. And uh, like I, I I like Zach Charbonnet. If you would have told me, hey, Charbonnet is going in the second round of the NFL draft, I sign me up. And then he goes <laughs> to Seattle. Seattle, like, see, I hate Seattle. Like you you if you only know how. I walked away from that draft fuming because they 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 cut the nuts off my wide receiver one and my running back one. 
Well, who was your, who was your wide receiver one? Running back. I think I had him running back too. I felt safe. He was, you know, he had a safer spot than on um, Gibbs. You know, I, I, I knew you liked Charbonnet. I didn't. I, we didn't know Gibbs was gonna go damn twelve overall. Nobody, nobody knew that. But uh, they neutered two of the players that I liked in the draft. I said Seattle, but I, <laughs> I don't know what they're doing over there. <laughs> so, yeah, that was so so irritating. Um. Because, like, ultimately, we want to say landing spot doesn't matter. And maybe you could get away with that for wide receiver, uh, quarterback, tight end. But, you know, quarterback, you need to be able to develop these guys. So I think situation does matter. You want a strong organization. But then with running back, you got to be on the field. And if you're splitting carries with a healthy Kenneth Walker, that's not going to be helpful to see time. When, when we want to get these fantasy points from these running backs. But I think we are going to get, like, I know we do this every year and we hype up these spots like Dallas, Chargers. I, I think we're going to get some really nice running back landing spots. But we say that every year and it never comes to fruition. So if, let's say, Jonathan Brooks is not drafted by the Cowboys, they take. Benson and Jonathan Brooks falls to the third round. Are you in on him? I'm still in on him. So my throughout the offseason so far, I went Trey Benson was my running back one. Then a tier. And then like I had Jonathan Brooks as the running back two. I now have them tiered together, which allows me to give the cop out answer. Landing spot will be allow me to flip and flop those two guys. But Jonathan Brooks, worst case scenario, barring a Charbonnet Seattle situation, is my running back too. So if he, even if he... If he's drafted that? in the fourth round, are you still in him? Uh, that's a different story. I'm, I'm just I'm just wondering when you out on him. If he, slips, <laughs> if he slips to day three, because that's not the expectation at all, then I'm going to be concerned. So if he slips to the fourth round... Yes, I will be out on him from where he's going to be going, similar to like we talked about with the J.J. McCarthy. But I think he's a complete back. Is he a little broken right now? Yeah, but they're going to put him back together. He's like the he's like the scarecrow, you know, all the all the 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 hay coming off of him, and then you know they stuff him all back together. He's going to be looking good. He's going to be looking good. So I don't really have my running backs ranked. Um... I just got prospect scores and my the one that earned the highest. And that's why when it comes to running back, it's going to be about draft capital. If they don't get at least third round draft capital, they don't, they don't matter. They'll, they'll drop tremendously. But uh, right now I got jail and right ranked high and um, he's ranked my number one um, with Jonathan Brooks. I just, I couldn't do it. It, I can't rank someone high that's injured. It, you get, if 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 I needed you to play today, you can't even play today for me. He, and he's coming off a major injury. I know. Like people I, just throwing this, like throw that to the wind. And come off a major injury. So what we usually do with running backs when they get in, we usually don't even draft them that season and redraft. We don't even draft them. Send send them off to pasture, right? Like <laughs> we, don't, uh, we, don't, we wait, we wait another season. So you you're not gonna get real production out of them this year. I mean, you, you to me, you're wishing upon a star if that's the case. And here's and here's the killer part for me. Here's why I can't be in on Jonathan Brooks. Jonathan Brooks potentially is injury prone. The one, the one time he finally get a chance. The start, the one season he get injured, major injury, and y'all in on him as your RB one. I, I said he's my RB two. No, 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 I'm talking about the consensus. No, no, I'm not talking about you specific. I'm talking about the consensus. A lot of people. You're getting me all riled up over here, Terrence. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people have them as their RB one. Yeah, you know, I, oh, that's trust me, I know like the consensus. <laughs> if if you. If you do take Jonathan Brooks, like you, you have to ha be patient with him. Obviously, you have to have that expectation. He's going to start the season on a pup wherever he goes, and then production for the rest of the year 
could certainly be lacking. And I think that needs to be your 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 thought process. So if you take him, if you do, you got to be patient with him. You you have to. Yeah. Good luck, Dynasty the people. Yeah, they. Yeah, have I know. But good luck, and 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 I don't know. I don't know if he's going to retain the value because that's what I'm saying. Like, let's say, okay, you get him, you draft him. He finally plays. He gives you the same production Javante Williams gave you this past season. Mm-hmm. You know, there's going to people, there's going to be people, you know, try to push that narrative that, okay, this is the second season, so he should get better. But, you know, <laughs> are you willing to wait for it? And what happens when he come out the gate? And it's still looking kind of the same. And especially with running back, like I think to an extent, even as dynasty managers, you got to look at it from a little bit of a redraft perspective because the shelf life is already short. Situations change so quickly with how strong and deep this 2025 rookie class is going to be. Who's to say a team doesn't double tap there and go running back 2025, whoever took him this year. So Maybe he's not. Maybe the landing spot looks good today, but in a year's time, he's not the bona fide running back one on whichever team drafts him. And that stands true for him, Trey Benson, everybody. So I'm, I, I, I and I want a realistic situation before I let you go, JB. So let's say because I can see him maybe re- retaining the value if he's drafted second round to the Cowboys. But if we're just gonna go realistic, more more than likely to go to the third in the third round. What team, you know, that you feel good about him going to that you can be, you know, all in on him? Oh, let me pull up the draft order here. Let me pull this up. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. So we're in the third round. Yeah. Uh, da, da, da. You know what situation makes a lot of sense to me? The Arizona Cardinals. You draft them, you sit on them, you let them recover, you run James Conner into the ground, and then you and then you have them to fill in next year. Uh, da, da, da. I the easy one I, I think is Chargers beginning of the third. I I think that's the easy one. You have the narrative that this team wants to to run the ball. You have, you know, maybe you'll get J.K. Dobbins for like one and a half games before he's injured again. And then you have Gus Edwards to to run him this year. But I think that's that's an easy one for me to look at. Uh, Chargers and then Cardinals are kind of like a, a dark horse for a team that could draft him and let him really recover. I really can see this guy falling. If, he, if he's not drafted to the Cowboys because that's the whole narrative, you know, that's out the, there. The doctor, the, it, that the doctor and everything. If he's not drafted to the Cowboys, I can easily see him falling to the fourth, fifth round. I, I honestly see it. Don't put I that out in the air. Don't, don't, don't even. I honestly don't. can see it because do you remember how high people was on Will Levis and when he was supposed to go to 104 or what, you know, I can honestly because we we be wrong, so wrong sometimes. That's why it wouldn't surprise me with McCarthy if he just goes in the second round. Like we might have it wrong. It wouldn't surprise me. Somebody but, shared uh, a couple of days ago a tweet from one year ago, and the betting odds were uh, across all, Vegas were Will Levis as the favorite to go one hundred two in the NFL draft. <laughs> and he slips and he slips and he slips. And then I remember there was a Reddit report, some uh, Reddit report. Somebody was like, I have inside information. The, all this smoke. Will Levis is going number one overall. <laughs> what are we doing here? Uh, but uh, could we see, you know, think about like the, the, the hype that kind of Sean Tucker had last year. And then he had the, the heart issue he had he he didn't really he didn't test at all wasn't medically cleared initially and he goes undrafted i don't think that's going to happen to jonathan brooks but would it shock me like you said terrence no it wouldn't shock me nothing shocks me anymore like with how freaking crazy the these drafts get and all the smoke and it's gonna be a long week (laughs) 
Well, I appreciate you coming on, man. Tell the people where they can find you at. Yeah, this was awesome. Uh, absolute blast talk with you. Nice to catch up again. Uh, it's been far too long. Uh, find me on Twitter at the Bauer Club. One of the hosts of Dynasty Theory. We got the Discord. We got the Patreon. Uh, we have the YouTube channel. We're going to be doing a live draft stream. Mitch and myself Thursday and Friday, like eleven hours combined. So come check it out. It's going to be a lot of fun. Terrence, I appreciate you having me on this morning. No problem. And hey, if you ever ever need me on just to come and talk shit, I'm you know I'm available, man. So.